Hi there, welcome to another episode of Microsoft Power BI certification that is PL300 exam. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about use Dex time intelligence functions in Power BI desktop models. How you can use it, what you can do with that. Let's find it out. My name is Ajay Kumar and I'm currently living and working in the Netherlands. Before that, I used to live and work in Singapore and I'm basically from India. If you would like to know more, please pause your screen and have a look. You can also connect with me over LinkedIn. You can check my profile over there. In today's video, we are going to talk about what is time intelligence, why use Dex time intelligence, types of Dex time intelligence functions. Before proceeding further, you should also know that you should have experience in creating Microsoft Power BI desktop models and designing Power BI report layouts. You should also understand how to create Dex measures and how to work with iterator functions in filter context. These are the prerequisite for this session. If you don't know anything about DEX or you would like to learn something more about DEX, then please do check out free tutorial links in the description section. That is going to help you out. If you are interested in this video, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Before we begin our today's video, here is something for you. We are seeking your help and your feedback. Please help us out how we can serve you better. On your screen, right now you can see a QR code. Please scan it and fill out the form. This would take two to three minutes of your time. But with the help of that, we can serve you even better. We can create tailored videos for you and the videos that you are most interested in too. Now, let's get back to our video. So very first, what is time intelligence? Well, guys, time intelligence relates to calculations over time. Specifically, it relates to calculations over dates, months, quarters, or years, and possibly time. It can be regular time period or it can be irregular time period. In your day-to-day -day life, you are going to face a lot of situations where you have to calculate sales or maybe revenue, benefits, profits, or some other calculations over time. In those cases, it's going to be very useful for you. So now the next question comes, why use Dex time intelligence? Well, guys, Dex time intelligence functions simply the task of modifying date filter context, primarily for standard date periods, for example, your years, quarters, months, sometimes days, etc. Now, you can see on your screen, there are two examples. One on your left hand side is without time intelligence and on your right hand side is with time intelligence. And you can see how it can make the code smaller. Basically, all the filter context, etc. can be handled by your time intelligence function. And that's how it's going to be very useful to write short but precise code over there. And that's how it's going to help you to write a precise and short code. But before you even think about to do that, you should also remember that creating complex time intelligence function can be tricky. Dex time intelligence functions can handle standard periods, for example, your years, quarters, months. But, however, for irregular periods or specific intervals, you may use calculate with custom date filters. That's how it works. Like, for example, you can see the same example which is on your left hand side on your screen. There are also some more prerequisite along with the prerequisite that I already mentioned in the beginning of this video. And what's that? The prerequisite that you should have a date table and at least one date table. You can have more than one if you would like to because of certain cases it requires. But at least one date table should be there and you have to mark it as a date table. If you cannot mark it as a date table, that means there is some issue with your date table. If you would like to know that how to create a date table, you can check our videos under Dex Sundays and you would get to know all about the query tutorial. If your data source doesn't have a date table, you can create your own custom table as well. You can even use the calendar auto or you can customize that calendar auto date function, uh, Dex function as well. In your model, the date table must have unique column with one date field, which has known blank continuous dates over there. If it's not, then it's not going to work. In Microsoft Power BI desktop app, if you would try to mark as date table a table, it won't be done unless you have the unique known blank continuous date spanning full years. All right, this is about the prerequisite. Now it comes to types of Dex time intelligence functions. We can divide it into multiple categories. So 
Dex time intelligence functions can allow summarizations over time, comparison, comparisons over time and returning single dates. So let's see, the very first is returning dates. So in this case, you can return your first date, last date, etc. And creating advanced calculations, you may need to use these Dex functions with calculate function. Second part is summarization. So summarizations can be like dates YTD, dates MTD, dates QTD. And you must be wondering what is YTD, MTD, QTD. It's year to date, month to date, or quarter to date. Similarly, you also have total YTD, total MTD, and total QTD, which are gonna help you to evaluate expressions for respective periods. And in this case, last but not least is dates between and dates period, which are custom date range functions. Lastly, we also have comparisons. For example, you want to use date add, parallel period, simple period last year, which are going to allow you to shift dates for comparisons. Similarly, then you can also find next day, next month, next quarter, next year, previous year, previous day, etc., which are also very helpful functions to compare your current year or previous year with the next year or previous year. So these are all the different types of DEX time intelligence functions that you may use when you are working with Microsoft Power BI to create complex DEX calculations. Now we are going to go for the demo. So stick with me and we are going to work on the demo. I hope you are enjoying this video so far and I'm sure that you are going to clear your PL300 certification exam. However, we request you to please fill out this survey which you can see on your screen. You can just scan the QR code and fill it out. This is going to help us to serve you in a better way. We can create the contents that you would like us to create and we can also focus on the areas where you would like to grow in your career. However, if you would like to take your career to the new level, then please join our channel. This would help us to create more dedicated contents for you and also you can take advantage of our tailored contents. For example, Definitive Guide to Power BI. This is a tailor-made project-based course which can take any beginners to the pro level. So please join us today. Over here, what we are going to do, we are going to try some of the DEX functions. As I mentioned, what are the different types of DEX time intelligence functions? So there's a summarization, there's a comparison, etc. So we are going to try it over here. I have this Adventure Box DW 2020 file, which I have downloaded from Microsoft site. I'm also going to provide you a link in the description section so that you can download it from there. Now, second part is about the date table. As I mentioned in your date, as I mentioned in your semantic model, you should have at least one date table. Otherwise, these functions are not going to work. If you are thinking without date table, you can work it. Trust me, you have to put a lot of efforts and still there are chances that you are not going to get the right results. Now, if you would like to create a date table and you don't have already, then what you can do? There is a date dimension script, which is over here. Let me show you this one. It's going to help you to create a date table very easily. So what you can do, you can simply come here, go to your data transformation tab. Once you are over here, you are going to use a blank query over here. So which is over here, blank query. Take this one and you have to simply go to advanced editor, control A, V, and then it's going to make your date table ready. If you would like to change the date over here, that you can do it. So you can see that from date and to date. And from date is over here, 2018. So you can make it, let's say, 2020. And then you can go to 2024 or let's say 2099, for example, if you would like to do that. These are the only two parameters that you need to provide over here. But how to make it dynamic, if you would like to know more about that, then please do enroll with us on our private trainings where we teach you everything about that. What is a Power Query, how to create a data model, how to work on a project, what is a real-time project, how to create parameters, etc. We have training programs for everything, so you can connect with us and we are going to help you out over there. You can enroll either in the beginner's class, intermediate or advanced class. It totally depends on you. So once you are going to just paste this query, it's going to create a date table similar to this one over here. And then you can simply close and apply and your date table is ready. But we are not going to use this date table and I'm going to delete it from our model. It's just for the illustration purpose that how you can create a date table if you don't have. So if you're going to come over here under table view and you would check your query. So your date table is ready over here. Then you can also customize this table furthermore in terms of formatting, etc. if you would like to. But as I mentioned, I'm not going to use it. So let me delete it over here. Delete from the model. That's it. So this is the way that how you can create a date table. Now, 
Very first, we are going to talk about the summarizations over time. And over here, we are going to use the total YTV. So what this function is going to do? For example, in case you want to calculate the YTD revenue. In our data model, we have certain tables you can see over there. And if you would like to know further, you can also go to the data model and you would get to know everything over here, right? So we want to calculate the revenue YTD. And for that, what we can do, we can simply come here under sales table and you can create a measure directly from here. Also, you can create a measure from here. Click new measure. And here you can simply write, hey, my total revenue YTD should be total YTD. Then you have to put your revenue. This measure has already been created in this, in this model and then date. And here 630. This means June 30. So this is going to be the year end date for me. If you don't have, then you don't need to mention it. It's going to take by default, which is going to be the year end. And simply hit on the return button. And now you are going to have this revenue YTD. What you can do in the next step, just put it over here. So I'm going to come here, revenue YTD. And I'm sorry, guys, it has been created over here in the customer table. But we also have a solution for that because I want to move it into the sales table. So what you can do, you would come here. Go to the molding tab, view tab, molding tab, home tab, select your revenue. And here you can see this under major tools. You see currently it's table is home table is customer. So you can move it into sales table and voila, it has been moved into my sales table from this table. So that's how you can even move your measures from one table to another table. Now you can see that you have your revenue and revenue YTD over here and this has been calculated over the time period so that's what a time intelligence function do right now we also talk about the comparisons over time that means if you have to talk about date add parallel period simple period last year etc then you have to use the comparisons dex functions and what are these well there are lots of functions over there for example if i'll talk about just let's say simple period last year in this case it's going to return a table that contains a column of dates that are shifted one year back in the time from the date in the specified dates column in the current filter. For example, if I'll say November 2017, so it's going to calculate November 2016. That's how it's going to work. So let's create one more next measure over here just for the illustration purpose. And I'm going to use this table this time. And here I'm going to type this one. So what it's doing? revenue previous year so what was my revenue in the last year then it's gonna say hey first create a variable variables are very helpful when you are trying to optimize your calculations but in some cases it doesn't work as well so you, it's not mandatory that every time you have to use variable but it's a best practice if you use it and then also check the performance first i'm using calculate function and here i'm saying hey my revenue simple period last year date and then simply returning this one hit enter button or you can also click over here and then it's been created. Now, if you are going to just drag it over here, now see what it has done. In 2019, you will get all the values of revenue from 2018. So you can compare this value over here, 1423, 1423 over here. So similarly, it's going over here. And as I mentioned, in the probably we don't have data for 2016 or 20, uh, 2016 over here. That's why we are not getting data from 2016 here, but we have 2018 and 2019. So in 2019, if you will go over here, the November 2018 data is same as November 2017. And you can compare these values literally one by one, four, seven, six, four. And if you're gonna come here, you would get this same value over here in the revenue period. So these are the comparisons over time. You can also use data at parallel period, etc. And as I mentioned, if you want to know more about it, then you can check our free tutorial, which the links is in the description section. There are lots of more DEX functions that you would like to use and that you would like to learn, but over the time period, you can learn. So don't overwhelm yourself with a lots of, let's say, work pressure that you cannot do that. You would learn as you are going to start working on it. But this is a part of the curriculum for PL300 exam. That's why I'm teaching you. You should know what are DEX time intelligence functions, what are the different functions, and what does a function do. You would also see some of the snapshots in your exam that, okay, complete this code or something like that. In that case, it's really helpful. And if you are already working on it, you are not going to get any problem between them. One last, we are going to talk about the dates between. So we can also check the new customers. For example, you can modify the measure by renaming uh, any other measures. That's the one thing. But, but you can also use this dates between function 
to return all the dates from certain time periods to certain other time periods. And in that case, for example, you want to calculate the new customer. How can you calculate? In this case, let's say we are going to write a new text function. I'm just going to give you the overview, not the complete one. Otherwise, this video is going to be too long. So over here, you see, this is a new customer. I have a variable which is going to check customer LTD. Then it's going to check using this calculate function. First, distinct count of my customer keys, which is going to give me the distinct number of customers. Then I'm using a date between text function over here and underneath that I'm using max date and what are the different dates over there. And first channel is internet. Then again, I'm checking it over here with minus one. So that's how it's actually working over here. Then you can see that I'm only looking for the new customers, not the previous one. So from one particular date to another date, I'm checking how many new customers have been added for that particular month. That's the whole intention of this. And in order to determine a date range over here, that okay, how many days are in between, we are using the dates between dex function over here. This dates between function returns a table that contains a column of dates that begins with a given start and continue until a given end date. When the start date is blank, it will use the first date in the date column. Conversely, when the end date is blank, it will use the last date in that column, right? So in this case, let's say the end date is determined by the max function, which you, we are using over here. That's how we are using the max date and which is going to return the last date in the filter context. And therefore we are using this dates between and the max date function over there. Similarly, we are using the minimum. So first and last date, basically we are uh, calculating over here and then we are trying to find it. Now, if you will hit the enter button again, and let me close this. And if I'll go here, new customer, so you would see some values are appearing over here. So these many number of new customers are appearing over here. Now, I believe you get a quite an overview. I accept that it's not a dedicated video on DAX, but this is all about to introduce you with the DAX time intelligence functions. If you would like to know more, please watch our other videos or enroll in our training programs for DAX training, Power BI admin training, Power Query training, Power BI training, Power BI certification training, fabric training, etc. So we have all sorts of trainings. You need to enroll with us if you would like to learn more and we are going to give you one-on-one -on -one training or in a group. That's your preference. Thank you so much guys for watching this video and I believe this is going to be very helpful for you. In this video, we went through what is text time intelligence functions, what are their different types, what are those functions and how to use them in our life also and how to use them in our practical day-to-day -day life. Also, we saw that how to create a date table. Now, I believe this is going to add a lot of knowledge to your knowledge base and you feel confident to go and appear for PL300 certification exam. But practice makes you perfect, so always do a lot of practice. If you have any question, concern, please do let us know. If you need any training, then also please contact us at Connect at BI Consulting Pro. We have all the sorts of trainings available for you. If you like our content and if you like us to continue, then please do support us by joining our channel. You can join as a data enthusiast where you have to just pay monthly a cup of coffee price to us. If you want to learn more, if you want to take the advantage of our dedicated courses, if you would like to schedule a one-on-one -on -one session with us for your career guidance or any help that you are going to need, then you have to join Master of Metrics. We are going to publish a lot of more courses over there and you don't need to pay anything extra. Our courses are dedicated and if you are going to enroll to our channel as a member program, then I'm sure you are going to clear your PL300 exam as well as your Microsoft Power BI developer interview with ease. With that said, keep learning. And I'm going to see you in the next video.